Hello aspirants, welcome to the another session of discussion of anthropology. So this lecture is little different from what are the lectures till date we have did because in this lecture I will cover some of the important news articles which have came in the various newspapers which are relevant to anthropology. So I am naming this series as a anthropology bulletin okay where you can use this news articles while writing the mains examinations like you can cite them as examples so without much delay let's start our session and this is our anthropology bulletin part 1 and this is presented by me Shailaja R.I.T. so without much delay let's start our session so, so now let us understand what are we are covering in this news bulletin the new images of uncontacted indigenous people in the Peruvian Amazon released Arjun Minda plans scheduled five states meet on FRA Rock Art of Ages, Indonesia cave paintings are 40,000 years old, Neolithic chewing gum helps recreate image of ancient Dane and child sex ratio worsening faster among SD census report. So guys these are all the articles which has appeared in the recent newspapers and please inculcate these articles if such kind of question comes in the examination then mention them as examples okay the new images of uncontacted indigenous people in the peruvian amazon released so why we are discussing because this is part of chap paper one chapter six where photographic method by using photographs we can study tribal culture what do you mean by this photographic method photographic method is uh, by using the photographs we can study tribal culture and it is part of the fieldwork in visual anthropology and who has actually proposed this this is actually proposed by Margaret Mead okay while studying chapter 6 uh, you can come across this Margaret Mead and uh, what she has actually proposed one of the most important attempts to bring photography into the center of anthropology was integrated met methodology was Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson's uh, they have included in 1936 project on the socialization of the children in Bali okay that's the reason why this photographic method has introduced in anthropology and you can cite this an example if Margaret Mead if a question comes on Margaret Reed and uh, fieldwork tradition okay so what what is actually saying what is this news article is conveying it is the new images of the uncontacted indigenous community in the Peru Peruvian Amazon have been released by ORPIO which means that organization of indigenous peoples of the East so we all know that Amazon is a cradle of uh, many uncontacted tribes there are many uncontacted tribes who are actually residing in Amazon and one such uncontacted tribes are recently they are picturized or they are actually the photographs of such uncontacted tribes are released recently the photograph shows the communal homes or malocas uh, belonging to the uncontacted indigenous people who live in the dense Amazonian forest in the Loreto state on the border with Ecuador okay Ecuador we know that it is a country which is in South America so if you consider this to the South America then you can see here we have this Ecuador okay and what what is the other points which is which this article is covering the Malacos are thought to be home to one of the many uncontacted indigenous people in the proposed Napo Tiger Reserve and this is a reserve in the Ecuador country. The images were taken by the field workers of the indigenous organization ORPIO which means that organization so here we have representative ORPIO which means the organization of indigenous peoples of the East. So ORPIO which is uh, the images were taken by the field workers of the indigenous organization ORPIO during a rare overflight in the November 2019 so these are the pictures which are taken by this organization while they are on flight and they have uh, they have actually given these photographs the majority of the world's uncontacted tribes live in the Amazon rainforest and they are and the Amazon rainforest is considered to be the lungs of the earth okay they are the most vulnerable people on the planet and a vital part of humankind's diversity these territories are some of the most biodiverse places of the earth and they are irrefutable evidence that protecting them is the best barrier of deforestation so because of the deforestation so this is the only barrier which is uh, actually guarding them um, that is uh, they are not contacted by the outer world unless their land is protected they will face catastrophe 
survival contacted campaign is doing everything possible to secure their land so they can choose how they wish to live okay now let us understand the second article of the day that is the uh, arjun munda plans uh, schedule five states meet on fra and uh, what do you, what do you mean by fra it is a uh, forest right acts so where can you can inculcate this article this comes under paper 2 chapter 6.3 which talks about the development of forest policy and tribes and now let us understand what is this article is all about union minister of tribal affairs that is arjun munda has asked the chief secretaries of all schedule fifth states what all comes under schedule fifth states guys it is a uh, andhra pradesh chatisgarh gujarat himachal pradesh jharkhand madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha rajasthan and telangana all these states comes under schedule five okay and um, un- this minister that is the union minister of tribal affairs arjun munda has asked the chief secretaries of all the schedule five states to organize a one day state level conference and create awareness about the provisions of the forest right acts which is proposed in the year 2006 and the state governments are responsible for the effective implementation of this act and in order to achieve this objective it is also necessary that the field functionaries involved in the implementation of the act are fully aware of the provisions of the act and the rules there under the letter sent to the chief secretaries on the november 20th 2019 by deepak kandekar who is secretary of uh, union minister of Tri- tribal affairs the letter added for this purpose there is a need for intensive awareness generation programs to be conducted at all levels of the implementation of the act especially involving the members of the gram sabha the conference will include panchayat pramukh or sarpanch village headman under the panchayats and uh, this includes uh, extension of schedule areas act 1996 and this is popularly called as psa and the forest officers at the level of divisional forest officer subdivisional forest officer and range forest officer these are all the pay- these all people are actually included in the conference which will be held and the minister would address this conference so finally the minister is responsible for addressing the conference now let us understand the third article of the day that is a rock art of ages uh, which are actually recently discovered in indonesian cave paintings uh, and they date back to 40000 years old now let us understand which covers under this covers under chapter 1.8b where we discuss about uh, prehistoric cultures where okay and now let us understand what is this talking about about a hundred caves outside moraz a town in the tropical forest of sulawesi were once lined with hand stencils and vibrant murals murals okay my murals is one of the important part okay while you, if you are studying history also murals is important part okay so vibrant murals of abstract pigs and dwarf buffalo so mention me in the comment section what do you mean by murals okay so if you are actually whatever you think whatever the knowledge you know about the murals you can always type okay if it is incorrect then i, I will be always there to correct it and these caves are painted or at least a ball park dates uh, and the finding suggests that the practice of lining cave walls with pictures of natural wise life was common 40000 years ago and even in india also we have this bimbetka caves we have this prehistoric art in india and which is actually recognized as world heritage center isn't it true or not a study published today in the nature suggests that the paintings in the moros pankev caves range from 17400 to 39900 years old and they are very close to the age of similar artwork found on the walls of the caves of the europe okay this is a similarity between the caves which are found in indonesia and the europe and what else we have find here patches of the potentially older art in a red berry colored paint probably a form of iron rich ochre that adorns a cave chamber entrances ceilings and deep less accessible rooms and previous uh, estimates put the maros cave art at no more than 10000 years old and the importance is uh, people didn't believe that the cave paintings would last for that long in the caves in a tropical environment but they have lasted that is the beauty okay and the fourth uh, 
Important news of this week it is a Neolithic chewing gum helps a recreate image of ancient day. Okay, so how we have actually recreated the image based on the analysis of the birch tar describes a female hunter gatherer with her dark skin and blue eyes. So this is a very rare phenomena. Okay, so dark skin with the blue eyes. Okay, that so why actually color of the eyes we uh, form because of one thing is it is always hereditary it is genetic in nature and apart from genetics uh, actually mutation also plays an important role mutation we cannot we cannot always trace back mutation for the negative effects sometimes these mutations will result into the beautiful phenomena like uh, forming the blue eyes greenness and etc but one thing what we have to always understand is that whatever the skin color we have whatever the eye color whatever the uh, color of the hair or the texture of the hair we have to celebrate it we everyone in this world are unique in their own way Okay, so the analysis of this bridge star describes a, a female hunter gatherer with dark skin and blue eyes. And at the dawn of the Neolithic era, a young woman discarded a lump of ancient chewing gum made from the birch star. So imagine at that point of the time, people are actually chewing some uh, chewing gums. Okay, so this chewing gum is made from the birch star into a shallow, brackish lagoon that drew fishes to the coast of southern Denmark. Okay, and this is the part of where you need to study about this this part this falls under paper one chapter one point b where we should we study about the prehistoric culture in which neolithic period so this falls under so this is the tar this is the thing that they have actually achieved okay the strands of the dna preserved in the gum point to a hunter gatherer from continental europe who had dark skin dark hair and blue eyes she lived near the lagoon itself protected from the open sea by shifting sand barriers about 5600 years ago according to the carbon dating of the birch star so you can trace back you can cite this an example not only to the paper one that is the uh, that is prehistoric cores, but you can also cite this as an example for the dating techniques. Okay, alongside her DNA, the researchers found a genetic material from duck and hazelnuts, presumed remnants of recent meal, and at least 40 types of microbes. So, these are all actually, all these are actually found on that gum. And the two centimeters long lump of ancient gum was discovered during archaeological excavation as the style tomb on the lowland island before the construction work on the Furman tunnel to connect Denmark to Germany. The stony site was more than a fishing ground with piles of bones from cattle, deer, ox, wildcats, dogs and otters. All are deposited there and near the remnants of the f wooden fish traps over hundreds of generations. Birch tar made by heating the tree bark. So how actually they they were able to uh, chew this birch tar? That is uh, by heating the tree's bark has been used as a natural adhesive for hundreds and thousands of years. In the Stone Age, the material was extracted on a mass scale to half arrowheads and other stools. Okay, so what is the prior purpose? The important purpose of this birch tar it is to you they are extracted to um, they to have the arrowheads and other tools but it had other applications too lumps of the tar found at the archaeological sites often contain juvenile tooth marks and given that it contains antiseptic substances it may have served as prehistoric toothbrush very wonderful isn't it true or not okay now let us understand the last news article of the day that is called as child sex ratio worsening faster among STs so this is the report which is published by the census very very unfortunate thing and uh, where you can actually cite this as an example this falls under paper 2 6.1 and uh, socio-economic characteristics of tribal population so whenever if such kind of question appears in the mains examination you can cite this as an example the latest data released by the census of india shows that the child sex ratio that is, the number of girls per thousand boys among scheduled tribes in the country has declined faster than other categories of the population between 2001 to 2011. So, what are the reasons? So what are the reasons for this decline of sex ratio? Mention me in the comment section. Okay, but the number of the girls born per 1,000 boys is still higher in the ST category than in the general population. The data also shows the marginalization of the India scheduled tribes. The rate at which people are giving up cultivation is also higher in this category. 
but more number of scheduled tribe women participate in the work force than the women in any category of the population the census report data released on october 28 shows a declining trend in the child sex ratio across all the categories the national average has dipped to 919 in 2011 from 927 in 2001 the decline in the child sex ratio of sts is higher it has declined from 973 to 957 but the child gender ratio among the sts is still better than the national average the child sex ratio sex ratio of the sts is the best in the chatisgarh at 993 and odisha at 980 the population growth rate of sts is more than the average population growth of the country which reveals the primary census abstract sc and st report of census of india which is published in 2011 the growth rate of general population of the country Country is 17.7 percent, whereas STs are growing at 23.7 percent. Even in urban areas, the growth rate of ST population is more. The growth rate of STs is 49.7 percent, whereas the general population grew by 31.7 percent. The data shows another trend. The proportion of the child population that is between zero to six years of STs has been decreasing. The proportion of the child population is overall thirteen point six of the total population, but the scheduled caste child population and tribal child population is decreasing at faster rate in comparison to the general child population. The census data shows overall improvement in sex ratios. and in all categories including that of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes between 2001 to 2011 this improvement is more visible in urban areas the sex ratio among sts is better than that of all categories the st sex ratio has improved to 990 from 978 per 1000 males whereas the national average has increased to 943 to 993 the census data shows st sex ratio has increased to 980 from 944 in urban areas On the other hand, sex ratio of general population in urban areas improved to 929 from 900. The national sex ratio of rural population is improving slowly in comparison to rural population of states. Odisha and Jharkhand, two of the India's poorest states with sizable tribal population, are the best performing states when it comes to the improved sex ratio of states when compared to the states like Rajasthan, where we find 948. and in uttar pradesh it is 952 and in jammu and kashmir it is very low that is 924 and in bihar it is 958 which also have tribal people goa tops the list when it comes to the sex ratio of the tribal population with 1046 females per 1000 males it is followed by kerala where we find 1035 and in arunachal pradesh it is 1032 in odisha it is 1029 and in chatisgarh it is 1020 okay that's all for the day hopefully you enjoyed this session so every week we will have a one anthropology news bulletin so you can connect these news articles whenever such kind of question appears in mains examination and aks on the behalf of aks we wish you very happy christmas very prosperous and bright christmas may santa bring lots of according to the traditions because we are actually studying the anthropology we should respect the traditions across the world okay so may the santa brings lots of joy happiness to your homes that's all for the day and hopefully you enjoyed this session till then happy learning bye bye